So my beard doesn't look like it's on fire anymore, does it? Nope. Okay, good. Welcome to Over the Years. My name is Tim, and I love vintage items. I hunt for treasures and bring you the ultimate prizes of antiques, collectibles, and vintage decor. Join me, my dukes, my girlfriend Josie, and other guests as we search for history. Welcome to Over the Years. It is another video of what has sold during the week. So these videos, we really try our best to kind of give you guys an idea of the things that we're selling. So hopefully you can take that information and find those things yourself. So we currently sell on six different platforms. That is eBay, Etsy, Macari, Poshmark, Depop, and Grailed. So we made sales this past week on every single platform except for Depop. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go over those sales with you guys right now. Um, let's start. Where are we going to start, my dukes? Wherever you want to. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, we'll start with Etsy. Change things up this, this week. All right, so the first thing that sold was this vintage mid-century modern art glass, heavy, smooth-footed amber glass bowl. Um, now, tip this piece we've had for a very long time. We typically don't um, buy that much amber glass anymore because it is much more of a slow mover, but we did this did give us some nice uh, return profit, and it was a really beautiful piece. I'm surprised that it lasted as long as it did. Um, but the buyer was all in on this uh, bowl for $36.98. So I wouldn't necessarily say don't look for those items. I would just say be selective. Uh, yeah, be selective and be aware that sometimes they might last a little bit longer. Now, this piece or pieces was super interesting. Now, this is something that we always look for and we always sell. If you watch our videos, you know that we are big fans of uranium glass, Vaseline glass, um, all of that sort of um, glass. Now this has a lot of different um, appeal to it because it is super art deco and because it is also uranium glass. Uh, this was a vintage art deco Vaseline glass lamp fixture pieces. So there are three pieces that were used in a lamp. And so those pieces um, I picked out of a antique uh, lighting fixture warehouse hoard that was closing and I got a really great deal on that. And the buyer was all in on those three pieces and all three of these pieces had damage, mind you. Um, the buyer was all in on those three pieces for $65.31. Next up, we have the last set of the Scotty Dog glasses. Um, I've mentioned in our live recently that anything Scotty Dog is going to be a great seller. These sort of mid-century modern swanky swig sort of glasses are also something that you want to keep an eye out for. Now this was some uh, vintage federal glass, mid-century modern swanky swig, Scotty Dog juice shot glasses, a set of six, and the buyer was all in for $38.50. Next up, we had a pretty large order. Um, this customer bought seven pieces, um, including Jasperware. The Wedgwood Jasperware, we've been preaching about it lately. And I'm telling you guys, if you see it out there, obviously certain pieces are gonna, not going to be necessarily crazy in value. But you can find them at yard sales, at flea markets, and all of these places for very, very reasonable prices. Sometimes even as low as a dollar. So she bought uh, this one. The first piece was a Wedgwood Jasperware. It was a little trinket box, grapevine, had the spike knob top. Then she bought a Jasperware ashtray. Um, she also bought a Jasperware Christmas plate from 1977. And she bought a Jasperware uh, Star of David round tray. And that one actually still had the box. And along with those pieces of Jasperware, she also bought a little interesting um, Wedgwood trinket box. It was um, octagon shape. And she bought a set of five uh, Hobby Lounge Limoges dessert bowls and a really nice red slag glass toothpick holder from Imperial Glass. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. Um, and it's mostly all little stuff. It's all very small pieces. 
But uh, she reached out and asked if we could combine shipping, and I was like, absolutely, no worries. Um, that, now that that slag glass is definitely something you guys want to be on the lookout for. It's 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 pretty becoming pretty popular again, wouldn't you say? I think Martha Stewart used it in her uh, one of her magazines. She mentioned slag glass was a great collectible. <sighs> yeah, so that'll that'll always spike interest. So the buyer was all in after discount shipping, sales tax for one hundred forty six dollars and seven cents. Next up, we have another piece of Vaseline glass, uranium glass. Um, this is just something you always want to be on the lookout for. Now, this was a really interesting piece, absolutely gorgeous. It was made by Faustoria Glass. Um, the name of the pattern was called Heirloom, and this was a like oval, oblong bowl, very mid-century modern, was a little dash of Art Deco in the shape and style. And the buyer was all in on that piece for $87.88. Next up, we have this uh, Fitz and Floyd bowl. So I'm kind of like up and down on Fitz and Floyd. Fitz and Floyd, it sells well, but it, sometimes it does take time. The thing is, is that it does sell for good money for the pieces. What do I thought most of the Fitz and, Flo Flitz. <laughs> Fitz and Floyd we had was that uh, cobalt blue with a gold trim. Yeah. We sold all of those. I think we might have one left. One I'm not left. Sure. But this oh. was a, uh, the name of the pattern was... Oh, I'm gonna butcher this. It's like the what's the name of that um like enamelware Chloe Cloisonne 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 Peony was the name of the pattern. It was a uh soup rimmed soup bowl, and the buyer was all in for that bowl for sixty three dollars and forty eight cents. It's not bad. Yeah. Next up, the Pyrex has been flying out the door. Uh, this is an order of four pieces. Um, unfortunately, I was unable to locate one of the pieces. I think I had a mishap in um, inventory tracking. I think I might have sold one of these pieces a while ago at the flea market and did not remove it from Etsy. Um, unfortunately, that happens when customers pay for ca cash and you're not on top of your game. So I sent the buyer a message and explained that it was absolutely my fault and I apologized. Um, and we will send the rest of her order and refund her the money for that portion of the order that we were unable to ship. Um, I did search high and low in the storage unit and here at Ma Duke's house and just, I, I'm, it's just not nowhere to be found. It's a big piece. It's not like it's a small piece. I can't find. So I had to just suck it up and take the blame and hopefully the customer is not too unsatisfied or dissatisfied with that. You usually have... They've been okay. Yeah, as long as you're upfront and honest about it, you know. So, and it's not like I just would send it without saying anything, you know. So, um, but they bought a um, oval divided dish um, in the verde pattern. They bought a blue refrigerator dish. They bought a snowflake turquoise on white oval dish. Um, and then they also bought the snowflake oval, which was a turquoise one. And that was the one I was unable to find. So the buyer was all in for one hundred four forty one, but um, a good portion of that uh, twenty five dollars plus shipping will be refunded to her because I was unable to locate that item. Uh, next up, another piece of Liberty Blue. So Liberty Blue seems to be picking up steam once again. This is a dinner plate. Um, they're no, they're not one of the more valuable pieces in this line, but they do consistently sell. And if you can find them at a dollar a piece, two dollars a piece, there is profit to be made. So the buyer was all in on this bowl, this plate for $25.58. The majority of that is shipping. Um, the buyer is located, I believe, in Texas or California. So uh, next up, this was a huge sale for me. It was a vintage 90s Seattle Supersonic starter snapback hat. I've started moving some of my hats over to um, Etsy and I've had some success. I think this is maybe the fifth or sixth one that we sold. And the buyer was all in on that hat for $80.26. And that came from our epic, our first epic vintage hat haul um, that I did on hazmats and snapbacks. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up top for you guys. Then I sold another snapback. Uh, this was a vintage 90s sports car graphic trucker hat uh, from Pennsylvania. And the buyer was all in on that hat for $30.03. So make sure you guys are keeping an eye out for these um, vintage hats. They're, they just, they're amazing. They Low cost, easy to store, easy to photograph, easy to ship. There will be times where you'll have to do a lot of work on them, but it's totally worth it in the end. 
And the last, oh no, I got a couple more things. Next up was another uh, piece of Flow Blue. Now Flow Blue is another thing that we always preach about. If you guys haven't seen our live stream on Flow Blue, I'll put a link up top there for you guys. Um, it's definitely something you always wanna keep an eye out for because there's that is one thing where the profit and the the value never really tends to dip like a lot of these um, other vintage collectibles and antiques of such. So this was an antique New Wharf Waldorf floral and bead embossed flow blue saucer. Now this is just a saucer. And that saucer, the buyer was all in for $35.87. And I have a, I think I have like three left of those. You're like, this is kind of like replacements. Yeah. Yeah, now they just bought the saucer. So, Next up, uh, Hall China, another thing that we always uh, pick up and we suggest that people pick up. It has a, a wide variety of, of appeal and there's, you know, they make mid-century modern stuff, they make Art Deco stuff, um, and it's all different sort of colors and different pieces. It's really nice. Um, we'll, hopefully we can, Ma Dukes and I are thinking about sitting down and doing a whole video on Hall China to kind of give you guys a little bit more insight on that um what are you doing it's it's the sun's coming through and it's all funny it looks like your beard's on fire okay you can stop the video now <laughs> we're gonna take a break really quick and adjust this light <laughs> i don't know why this is so my beard doesn't look like it's on fire anymore does it nope okay good so back to the hall of china so this was a uh vintage art deco uh, Hall China maroon. The name of the shape or pattern, as you guess you could say, was sundial. And this mold, was a, the mold. The mold, yeah. So this is a sundial. It was a very small individual creamer, and the buyer was all in on that piece for thirty six dollars and twenty seven. That's pretty cute. Yeah, it's a really nice piece. Hey, to see it go. <laughs> Next up was this vintage Royal Work. I don't want to mess it up. I even been saying it. it's Worcester, right? Worcester. Is it War? I think it's Worcester. Worcester, Worcester, or Worcester. 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 Ah! <laughs> I've been doing so good on my my England uh, pronunciation. Yes. Okay, viewers, remind me once again the right way to say it. Is it Worcester, Worcester, or Worcester? Worcester. Worcester. It's one of those. So anyways, this was a um, like an oversized cup, uh, coffee cup and saucer, and it had like old cars around it, and it said, to a very important person, Avery. I, I don't know the significance of it, but the buyer was all in for $36.45. Um, that is a company that I would suggest looking out for. The, everything from their old stuff all the way up to their new it's stuff. Their, it's quality. Yeah, high quality, good stuff, good return on those sort of pieces. Um, and then more Pyrex. If you guys haven't seen that video of Ma Dukes and I cleaning Pyrex, make sure you check that out. I'll put a link up top for you. Um, this was a vintage Pyrex brown earth tones loaf pan. Uh, the buyer was all in for that for $37.56. Uh, next up, we have another piece of Pyrex. So as you guys can see, we sold a lot of Pyrex. This was a uh, Pyrex Shenandoah, was the name of the pattern. It was a 474 Cinderella round casserole dish, and the buyer was all in on that piece for $19.06. That piece did have some damage on it, which is why the price was so low. Uh, next up was a vintage Pyrex Daisy round mixing bowl 402. This was one that we cleaned up in that Pyrex cleaning video, and it was crazy to see how the before and after on that. And the buyer was all in on that bowl for $42.44. So that's everything that's sold on Etsy. As you can see, Pyrex, Jasperware, Uranium Glass, continuous um, items that have been selling week after week after week. Now these are items that we highly suggest that you guys try to um, educate yourself as much as possible on because they can be found and can be flipped for a good profit. Uh, we made one sale on Poshmark this week. It was a pair of Lucky Brand jeans. Um, I got this was actually a retail arbitrage buy so my roommate had told me she had went to Gabe's a couple weeks ago and said they had brand new lucky jeans at like $11 so I was saw one on my way back from uh, picking something up and I stopped in I bought one pair that was the only thing I bought $11 and then they, those sold on Poshmark for $35 and they only took like two weeks to sell where did you get them 
Gabe's. Gabe's. I've never heard of that. Gabe's is kind of like a... Steinmart or something? Nah, it's like a Marshall's. Yeah, Steinmart. But like, not as big. It's a lot mm -hmm. smaller. Um, so that was the only thing we sold on uh, Poshmark. Now, Grailed is... Uh, we're getting ready to put together a whole other batch of clothes and hats. That's something we're going to be working on this week because... I'm almost done listing all the glass and china that I picked up from the last two weekends. So we're getting ready to upload a whole bunch of new stuff on Grail, Depop, Poshmark, you know, heavy on hats and clothes. So Grail is just con continuously making sales for me right now. Um, those will pick up as you add listings just like anything else. Uh, this is, goes right back to the snapback hats. This is a vintage uh, snapback trucker hat. It said Nashville across the front. And the buyer was all in for that for $25. Next up was this uh, really dope NASCAR snapback. Uh, this was the Daytona International Speedway one. This was one that had a little bit of damage on it. It was of that batch of those soaked hats. It was the last one that was in that soak that sold. And they all sold within a week and a half. Uh, maybe two weeks on this one. But as you can see on the screen, this hat had 39 likes on Grailed. And it sold for $30 the buyer was all in for. Next up was a pair of Nike Air Force Ones. This was a retail arbitrage buy from before the lockdown. I got these around Christmas. I got two pairs, two different colors. The other one sold a long time ago. This one kind of just didn't have a lot of traction. It's more of a, a fall, winter shoe, I guess. So... That's understandable. This actually sold to somebody in Slovakia, and they were all in for $120. So I more than doubled my money on that RA buy. Next up was another snapback from that haul. This one it was a uh, Northrop Grunman snapback. And just a plane, you know, had that on top. And it's like, I think they do like, well, I can't remember, aerospace. Yeah, I think it's a defense some kind of or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So like these, these uh, Turnox told me that this is one of those hats that you want to look out for. You know, they sell, and I was like, ah, I mean, it doesn't really look like much, but it sold twenty dollars. The buyer was all in for. And the last thing that sold on Grailed was this Patagonia button up. Um, I had this sitting around for a little while, but I took an offer, and the sold buyer was all in for twenty dollars. Uh, everybody, if you don't know, Patagonia can be a very uh, profitable flip if you get it at the right cost and it is the right piece. So that was everything that sold on Grailed. Now we're going to go ahead and show you guys what sold on eBay this past week. So a lot of the things, quick flips, um, came from eBay recently. Um, this was a vintage Fenton glass sitting cat satin crystal figurine. I picked this up at the yard sale for a dollar and it sold probably within 20 minutes for $14.99 plus shipping. Next up was this vintage Wedgwood Jasperware. Here you go again. Jasperware is selling and it's on selling on multiple platforms. Uh, this was a pale blue on cream um, mini, like a, not mini, but a small posy bot. And that sold for $30 plus shipping. Next up was a uh, putter. This came from those two bags of golf clubs I found on the side of the road for free. This was a tailor-made Rosa Daytona Sport uh, putter. And the buyer was all bought this for $27.99 plus shipping. Um, so shout out to my man Casey over at the Carolina Hustler. He, you know, helped me with these golf clubs. Golf clubs are like one of the most popular things right now. So... I suggest, you know, doing a little bit of research on golf clubs, you know, taking a look at some of those items because they can be flipped for good money. Next up, another piece from the glass yard sale. This was a vintage imperial glass, uh, marigold carnival glass. The name of the pattern was Open Rose. It was a small ruffled bowl. I uh, bought this for a dollar. Carnival glass, always be on the lookout for uh, we're going to do a little bit more of a deep dive into that on one of our educational videos that is coming up. The buyer bought this for $17.50 plus $5 shipping. Next up was some car manuals. So I went through this little phase where I was buying all these car manuals because, you know, I thought they were like going to be this like huge thing. And don't take me wrong. Car manuals are definitely a good thing to be looking out for. But you want to make sure you comp them before you just buy any one of them because they can be slow sellers 
because you know it's a specific person that's looking for these sort of manuals but um i did make some money on these it was a set of i think it was four of them 1978 Ford car shop manuals and the buyer was all in for 19.99 plus shipping on those where'd you get those originally i got them from an online auction shop i will i think oh. uh next up was another item from that dollar glass yard sale not the glass shed but the first one we went to two weeks ago uh this was a little medical bottle and i tell you guys all the time if you see one of these old bottles that has writing on it buy it there's people out there that collect them. Some can be really crazy valuable. But no Taiwan on the bottom. Yes. No, make sure they don't say Taiwan on the bottom. Is it? Yes, Taiwan. Um, so this was a Bromo, Bromo Pepsin bottle. Um, amber glass. Really nice. I hadn't seen a Bromo bottle in amber before. Uh, the buyer was uh, bought this for $9.99 plus shipping. Uh, next up was this vintage Hot Wheels Racing NASCAR Jeff Burton like tractor trailer thing still in the box sealed i got this for two bucks um and it sold for fourteen dollars and 39 cents now i usually buy anything nascar or hot wheels if it's like a dollar or two dollars and then if it's more than that i'll comp it to make sure that there's some value in it because there are a lot of people out there that buy these sort of things and it's definitely worth getting into and then next up is another flow blue butter pat uh, we've talked about Flow Blue already during this video. You guys have seen this exact same Flow Blue butter pad already in previous What Sold videos. Um, this is a antique Stanley Pottery. Terrine is the name of the pattern. It is a Flow Blue butter pad, so it's a little small dish about this big. And the buyer bought that for $28 plus shipping. Uh, next up, that sold on eBay. The last thing that sold on eBay and the most awesome thing that sold on eBay was the Milk Glass coca-cola tray that i picked up for one dollar at a yard sale if you guys haven't seen that video i'll put a link up there for you um it probably sold within about a week and the buyer bought that for 70 dollars plus shipping so it was a great flip um awesome piece coca-cola always you know not everything coca-cola is gonna be worth a lot of money but there's a lot of different different things out there that can bring you a lot of value um i actually am super lucky i have a coca-cola book um in my collection of books so keep an eye out make sure you do your comps coca-cola don't forget about coca-cola so we did make a couple of sales on macari the first thing that sold awesome sale on macari so everybody knows nintendo 64 is a hot sell all the time um, I got super fortunate. I went to that yard sale where it was all glass. And the only thing that didn't have that was glass was this Nintendo 64. And I got it for $1. And it sold on Macari within an hour and a half of listing. It was the console, the power cord, and the RCA cord. And that sold for $90 all in. Uh, the next thing that sold was this uh, San Antonio snapback hat. Uh, when you're looking for snapbacks, you want to see those big sort of spell outs and graphics on the hat. Those are definitely highly sought after. This is the second time I sold this hat. I sold this hat on Grailed. The buyer, it got sent back to me. Then the buyer filed a claim on PayPal saying that they never bought it. I guess that's why it got sent back. Um, I relisted it and it sold again. So the buyer bought this for $25. If he says he never bought it, but he gave you money. Didn't he? Yeah, I mean, it's just. What did he do? Refund his money? Yeah, he oh. sent the hat got sent back to me. Oh. So, um, the next thing that sold was another one of those dollar pieces from the Dollar Glass Yard Sale. Um, this was a vintage Fenton glass. Holly was the name of the pattern. It was a marigold carnival glass compote, and that sold for seventeen dollars. And that sold fairly quickly, about a couple hours until that one was sold. Then I got another piece of Pyrex that came from that same yard sale. That yard sale has pumped out some profit already early, which is what I like to see, quick sales. Um, this was a vintage Pyrex Autumn Harvest round mixing bowl, and the buyer was all in on that bowl for $20. So that is everything that sold across all of the platforms. Hopefully you guys were able to um, absorb some of this information and can use that next time you go out sourcing and hopefully um, find some treasures to flip for a good profit. Uh, stay tuned to the channel because we are really going to be working hard 
on pumping out more educational uh, content for you guys to kind of teach you guys the things that I have learned um, in order to kind of diversify your reselling portfolio and expand and you know make some more money. So thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And there's all these cool videos right here around me that you guys should check out. Uh, thank you, as always. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.